Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Microsoft stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Microsoft is a technology company with headquarters in Redmond, Washington. It develops, manufactures, licenses, supports, and sells computer software. Its best known software products are Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Office, and Internet Explorer. Its flagship hardware product is the Xbox. It is the world's largest software company. It was founded by Bill Gates and Paul Allen in 1975. It rose to dominate the personal computer market with MS-DOS in the mid 80s, followed by Microsoft Windows. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company. 1.7 trillion market cap, they're trading at 218 a share, and they have 7.5 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast the free cash flows, and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And you can see the company has positive and growing free cash flow each year. It goes from 31 billion to 45 billion. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement, and they also have growing net income. It goes from 21 billion to 44 billion. Their revenue also grows at a pretty good pace each year, from 90 billion to 143 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue. Below that is the cost of revenue, and the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit, and their gross profit was close to $100 billion in 2020. Below that is operating expenses, and the operating income was $52 billion, $10 billion more than a prior year. They also have $2.6 billion of interest they pay in their debt, then there's $2.7 billion from other income. So pre-tax they generated $53 billion. Some companies wouldn't generate this much money in their entire lifetime. And their net income was $45 billion, and it doubled from 2017. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much money the company generates from its operational business. Then they have capital expenditures. These are investments in property, plant, and equipment. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx, and that was $45 billion. So the company has a ton of free cash flow left over to invest back into their business or pay down debt or buy back stock, whatever they want to do. They issued a lot of debt in 2017, $44 billion, and then another $7 billion in 2018. When a company like this issues debt, it's probably to acquire another business. They do pay back a good amount of debt each year. The company repurchased a lot of capital stock, $12 billion, $10.7 billion, $19 billion, and $23 billion. So when a company buys back stock, that's anti-dilutive. It improves the shareholder value. And this is a breakdown of their operating cash flow. And this is the lifeblood of any company, their operational business, and how much money they generate from it. So to calculate operating cash flow, it's net income, which is $44 billion. Then you have to add back the non-cash expenses from the income statement. They had $12.8 billion of depreciation. They had a positive $3.6 billion of deferred taxes, so we have to minus that out on the statement of cash flows. They also had an expense of $5.3 billion in stock-based compensation, so we have to add that back to the statement of cash flows, since that's a non-cash item. So they generated nearly $61 billion of operating cash flow in 2020. They increased their operating cash flow each year, Microsoft is such a solid company, they're considered by some to be a monopoly. Let's look at a capital structure. $118 billion of equity, $71 billion of debt. And when you see that much debt, you might be concerned, but they have $136 billion of cash on their balance sheet. So they can pay down all their debt and still have $65 billion of cash left over. The interest they pay in their debt is 3.65%, and their cost of debt is 3.05%. And 38% of their capital structure is debt, which means 62% is equity. Cost of equity is 8.6%. And their beta is 0.82. That's how volatile the stock is. So it's less volatile than the market. And their WAC is 6.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $2.1 trillion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.85 trillion. 
we divide that by 7.6 billion shares and we get a calculated stock price of 245 they're trading at 218 so they're trading at 11 percent discount it's a buy according to the model simply wall street's a little lower than me they're at 233 a share they're also saying it's undervalued so the stock price has gone up a lot the past five years. It's almost trading at its all-time high. There was a little dip back in March, but it's come right back up. It appears the company raises its dividend each year. They're paying a 1% dividend, and their payout ratio is 36%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $99,000 today. If you did not reinvest the dividends, you'd have $83,000 today. So the stock has done much better than S&P 500. It increased 39% in the past 52 weeks compared to 15% from the S&P. Their 52 week low was 132 and their 52 week high was 233. The stock is trading above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. So it's in an uptrend. When the 50 day moving average moves above the 200 day moving average, which it did, that's considered the golden cross. That's a bullish signal. This is a really liquid stock over 29 million shares are traded every day and almost all the shares outstanding are on float which is good this is such a great company that institutions want to hold it 72 percent of the shares are held by institutions it has a really low short percentage less than one percent of the shares are shorted let's look at the financial ratios the average pe in the market is 12.4 the median is 14.8 P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 37.3, so investors are paying about $37 for $1 of earnings. That's worse than the median and average. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 11.6, so they're also worse than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 14.0. And the way you calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and their tangible equity is $68 billion. Since they've done so many acquisitions, they have a lot of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 20, so they can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 37%, much better than the median and average. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 2.5, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are $136 billion of cash. You won't find many more businesses that have more cash in their balance sheet than Microsoft. And they have $32 billion of receivables. So they're really well capitalized. Their 2020 free cash flow was $45 billion and their working capital is nearly $110 billion. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 14 companies in the same industry as Microsoft, and Microsoft is right here. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. In terms of PE, they're a lot worse than the average. They are better in price to sales. They're worse than average in price to book. They do have a higher current ratio than the average. They're doing much better in ROE than the average. They're lower in debt. And of course, they have the largest market cap since they have one of the largest companies in the world. And their dividend is much better than average. So to summarize, I do have them trading at 11% discount. But this company, I think, is always a buy. It's always going to go up over time in price. It's such a great company. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.